I'm Daniel and I'm a recovered addict and alcoholic. My sobriety date is April 13th, 2014. I originally came to the Owl's Nest in 2007 after doing five years in prison due to my drug use and trafficking. I had lost my kids to DSS. I, my family basically had nothing to do with me anymore. And it was all because of me running on self and continually doing what I want. I remember when I first, my first drink, I was 10 years old. I was at my godfather's house being hid from my mom due to court things that my dad was trying to get custody of us. And he got me drunk and molested me. This happened numerous times before I finally said anything. And looking back now, I could tell that's where my self-esteem really hit rock bottom. My manhood was affected. You know, I never felt good enough in the beginning before that, so this didn't help. But I had to go through that process. And along the way, I got where I just didn't trust nobody and didn't really give a crap about nothing but myself. Um, I grew up with nothing but addicts and alcoholics, my whole family. Every male figure in my family died pretty much due to cirrhosis of the liver. So I was pretty much born to be an addict and alcoholic, I believe. I got five years in prison for violation of probation. I was on probation for tracking, trafficking marijuana and had a guy wear a wire in on me. And once I got out of prison, I thought maybe prison was going to be enough. But even five years in prison didn't stop me from getting high when I got out. As much as I said that I was never going to get high again. And I came to the Owl's Nest because I just didn't want to live that way. And I was fighting DSS, etc. And once I got there, my third day there, once I finally detoxed a little bit, they mentioned the real problem. And when they started talking about the mind and the body, I already knew what time it was. The body answered everything to me that I could not account for. Why did I keep going? This allergy that I have, why did I keep going after I started? And then when they told me the mind, I already knew I was pretty much retarded, so that didn't really shock me. But to find out why I couldn't stop was because of the fact that I didn't have the power anyway, that was, that was a little shocking, you know, because I always thought I was a, a big man with a lot of willpower and all, and the fact is, is I never had enough willpower to not use. So, I got here and went through the program, got my first job when I was 27 as a resident here, waiting tables. Imagine an ex-con waiting tables, that's pretty interesting. But I think my higher power decided that was going to help me practice the principles in 10, 11, and 12, you know, on a daily basis. And I walked through that and I ended up commencing. I stayed around here in Florence for almost five, almost six years. I kept my job the whole time. I had a place, I got my license back, and they don't really like giving people that's been caught trafficking twice their license back too much, but you know, I was blessed to be able to do that. And I was able to walk through a lot of hard stuff and stay sober. Uh, around nine months into my sobriety, the mother of my children passed away. She was killed in a car wreck due to drugs and alcohol. And I was able to walk through that with the network, my friends, using what I had learned at the Owl's Nest and applying it to my life, you know. And I walked through it and didn't get high. And that's amazing, you know, because that's what I've always done in my whole life, is just get high to deal with everything, to be numb. And I started throwing myself more to helping others, and around three years of my sobriety, I think, I was offered a job at the Owl's Nest, and I took it. And I began helping other addicts and alcoholics just like me. And it's crazy to say that you'd have asked me in 2007 when I walked in the doors here if that I would have been helping others or I'd be doing meetings or workshops etc I would probably told you you were something mentally was wrong with you or get out my face because I would have never seen that because one of my biggest fears was talking in public and yet now I do it as my career on a daily basis you know I'm blessed now I have a wife two beautiful stepdaughters I have my son, Ethan, who doesn't live with me, but I get to see regularly and get to financially actually support him. You know, I pay my bills. That's amazing, you know. Anybody that knows meth addicts and crackheads, we don't pay bills, you know. But I'm also fixing to have a child any day now, a little boy, add a little testosterone into my household, you know. And all this is nothing done by me. 
because me running the show lost my sobriety date. My, I, I relapsed in seven and a half years of sobriety due to me deciding to run the show again. That's why my sobriety date's April 13th now. And all I did was for three months quit doing what I learned in this program, and I drank. And once I drank, eventually I used drugs. So this time getting sober, though, I had so much more to lose because I had a life. You know, when I came into the Eyes the first time, I didn't have nothing. So I learned a lesson that I had told many of my sponsees in the past when they came in. I would tell them that they had an experience of relapse that I didn't have. They're going to be able to help people that I couldn't reach. And the first thing one of my sponsees that helped me said, do you remember me telling you that? And I was like, yeah. And he said, well, now you've got that experience. So I look at it as another part of my story to be able to reach others to say that even if you do fall short, that doesn't matter. You could pick yourself right back up. You know what to do now. So today my life is amazing. You know, it just really is. I love being a father. I love helping other addicts and alcoholics. I love seeing the light flick on that they have hope like I did when I came in these doors. There's not a high like it.